Let's introduce then my guest on the show from RIM or Research in Motion, Sunil Dutt. Thanks very much. Pleasure to meet you. Good to have you here on the show. I can see you're a seasoned golfer dressed for the entire sunny afternoon. Yeah, well, I can't say I'm a seasoned golfer. <laughs> I'm still a golfer who keeps trying. Who keeps trying? Well, yeah. Golf is all about trying. Yeah. yeah. So is, I guess, your own business. I mean, you know. Yes. No matter which business you are in today, you can't give up. That's right. You're a company that's um, in motion these days because of plenty of news flow. Yeah. Uh, you know, research in motion, BlackBerry, the maker of BlackBerry is, is tremendous. The world knows it. Everybody knows it's a huge brand by itself. And it's got massive challenges. How are you walking the balancing rope? Well, I would say, uh, Shelley, it's, it's, not, it's not really challenges that I keep looking at. I look at every challenge as one of the opportunities to be converted. And uh, that's the way I've been all the time. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, when I look at uh, what keeps getting reported, People keep saying, you know, a lot of challenge, etc. I think so far as India is concerned, there's a lot of opportunity for us. One, we have a very strong equity amongst our consumers in India. Yeah. We have very exciting products. And we have a very large youth market in this country. When you look at Research in Motion in India, what do you think has worked for them? Uh, give us a little bit of history about when they began their services in India and what's it meant for them from a global standpoint, the growth story here. 2004 is the year in which BlackBerry launched in India uh, with the carriers primarily focused on the enterprise segment and uh, that was because enterprise was one of the key strengths of uh, BlackBerry globally also and we were operating through the carriers we launched through Vodafone and Airtel in this country yeah. and that's where we began with and uh, as happens with most of the enterprise products it starts with large enterprise government kind of adoption yes. and then it goes into the individual adoption mode. This product category went faster into the individual product uh, ownership because uh, a lot of enterprise also no longer want to, CFOs don't want to get into the capex of mobile phones yeah. and therefore uh, individual ownership started to go up. Added to that was the fact that uh, large youth market of India suddenly open up which yes which is uh, uh, very comfortable in experimenting with their devices yeah and in wanting to get connected and then of course the whole desire to be online non-stop all the time being yeah. connected through email through BBM and BBM yeah. was an exciting one for them so suddenly a huge youth consumer market opened up Right. I would say youth, youthful, both. It's one of those strategies, you, you're you better off being in the bunker than slipping into the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that, that sort of suddenly reflects on exactly where I think, I think that RIM might have been with this whole server issue with the government, for example. It's better to be a little bit stuck rather than being really in the deep water. Do yeah. you agree with that? No, I don't think so, because uh, uh, I think one, it got wrongly stated and blown up out of the proportion mm -hmm. because uh, the whole security issue was not really a rim issue. Okay. It, it was, was a government issue? It was a larger it was a larger enterprise issue related with all mobile phone brands sure. uh, rather than just a rim issue. Except that you're one of those that you know have a large market share in terms of enterprise and I yeah. guess that people would then look upon you to state the benchmarks of the industry at least I would imagine no well fact of life is you know government were very quick to identify and understand that it's a larger issue than the rim issue okay and that's how it has been stated as well that's how the government has appreciated it also yeah and uh, they've also understood the fact that in so far as uh, the enterprise encryption is concerned it's not there's nothing in our hands. It's all lying behind the firewalls of the enterprise. Right. And so far as the access to the individual Accounts uh, is concerned. account is concerned, we've given the solution to the government, yeah. which we were always committed to giving. But, you know, of course, this, um, the government has uh, often, through various channels uh, uh, and ways, passed on the message to the rest of the country that BlackBerry's uh, enterprise server will be accessible to them as and when they need uh, can you can you elaborate on what that means for users of BlackBerry? Well, 
everybody's uh, everybody's server or, or information access will be available to the government. Okay. And that is how it's been stated also now. Okay. So it's not just RIM. Okay. So if the government wants to intercept lawfully anybody, they can. I mean, and it's 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 related to they the security of now. the country. They can now. Yes, I can't speak for the other brands, but so far as we are concerned, we have given the solution to the government. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the government side is one story. The other is the huge market that you have access to today in a country like India. Uh, BlackBerry has been doing pretty well. You've been launching a large number of products. Uh, what, from a global standpoint, is the India contribution? How well is India doing for RIM globally? Okay. RIM has something what is called focus countries, where we have uh, focused efforts on... Uh, on uh, some countries and India is one of the focus countries. Okay. It is also because uh, uh, RIM in India is doing well. We are doing quite well. Our, uh, uh, what's the rate of growth, for example? Well, we've been uh, at some point in time we've been doubling, but given the fact that you know the market at a point reaches a point where you don't double. But the absolute numbers are still are still pretty large. Okay. So now I guess we are in that stage. Okay. So you know uh, the competition has sort of been going up, as you know, and uh, I'm sure as first movers in 2004, you've seen all kind of competition. Yes. Competition that came from uh, indigenous players, uh, competition that came from the uh, iPhone move into India. Uh, what has been a rim strategy to sort of uh, dodge them? No, we don't dodge them. <laughs> you welcome them? We don't dodge them. Yeah, actually, you should welcome competition because that's good for consumers. It's yeah. always good for consumers because then consumers actually come back to you and they keep, they keep telling you what they want. Mm. So, so far as we are concerned at RIM, the strategy is very clear. Keep listening to the consumers. Listen, listen, listen. And don't just hear what they are saying. Listen to what they are looking for. Listen to what they are seeking in your devices. And then try and go back to your drawing boards, try and go back to your company and try and get them those solutions. When did you pick up golf? Uh, well, I started 2004. That's around when RIM entered India. Uh, around when RIM <laughs> entered India. By coincidence. Yes. Okay, that's, so, you know, golf was like something that your friend uh, put you into or what? Well, actually, my ex-boss. <laughs> Interesting. I'd like to know that story. Boss is taking their... Um, well, I would say their team members onto the golf course could mean... Well, he, he's a very passionate golfer. Weaning them off the work plates for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he had done that during the workout, but he never. Uh, he kept at me to start off golf because he knew that I, I used to play cricket. And uh, once on a, on a driving range when he was in a tournament, I was swinging the club around. Somebody told him that I have a natural swing. Because uh -huh. you start golf. And he actually brought me his old set and gave it to me to start practicing. Oh, that's nice. And well, uh, started So, off where that. was he your boss? Because you recently joined RIM, for example. Nokia. Nokia. I used to work at Nokia in 2000, and this was in 2004. That's the time when he got me started into so it. So, let me ask you a trick question. You're playing a golf, uh, a round of golf with your boss. Would you ensure that you win or would you ensure that you lose? Thankfully, with that boss, that wasn't the case. So, you could win or lose. It didn't matter to him because from the time that we that we got into the car together to the golf course and back to our destinations he would not talk shop <laughs> so it was good and now when i'm playing with my team members if ever i follow the same but i'm sure you are uh, changing your tack when you're playing with your client no not when i'm playing golf yeah no not no when business. i'm playing no because no I, networking you don't sell a blackberry to somebody who's using an iphone uh I would love to do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 that's not a part of the agenda when I'm playing golf. And the reason is when I'm on the golf course, I come here to de-stress myself, to relax, just enjoy myself. I'm never bothered about if I, if I get a bad shot, that's all right. If I get a good shot, that's all right. I don't scream at a caddy. I don't throw my clubs. I'm always relaxed. So that's all right. Yeah, let's see. Uh, there is headwind. Oh, I'm a little off.
Just marginally on the Let's see. If the wheel is wide enough, then I might be on it, but maybe a little off the green. Just a little off. I, I can see that you're wearing a US 2011 congressional shirt. So were you there? <laughs> uh, a gift from uh, a friend of mine. With uh, and he stays there in Florida. Oh, lovely! And uh, after having extracted the promise that I'm going to visit him this time and play with him over there. Oh, that's nice. You should not be complaining. I'm not. <laughs> that's that's a plan. You shouldn't delay too much. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. In fact, I am going to be there uh, early May. Okay, that's nice. So I should be, I should be getting a good game there. <laughs> Wait, you know, you were talking to me about um, constantly reinventing at uh, RIM. Yes. Now, what is it that you've learned from India that you've been able to imbibe in your products? And how has the Indian market taught you a thing or two about getting more customized to the local customer? This market, the majority of the consumers that you have are young consumers mm -hmm. or youthful consumers. Okay. The other is, uh, <clears throat> this is a market where the carriers, the operators, mm -hmm. do not push the solution to you. You make the choice of your handset yourself and then you decide which carrier to go in for. So as a result of that, you have the complete freedom of choosing your device. And uh, therefore, for a brand, it becomes very, very important to figure out what is it that the consumers are looking for all the time. So you've got to be investing in consumer insights, yeah. trying to figure out all the time as to what are they seeking. So give me an example so, of something that you might have already used and done. Okay. So, we were always a very strong uh, brand on our QWERTY, uh, QWERTY uh, handsets. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and, a, and, a, and a brand which was focused completely on uh, enterprise sort of solutions. Correct. Right. Okay. But now, we have uh, QWERTY, we have touch devices, we have hybrid devices which are QWERTY and touch both. We have in our, in our devices various applications meant for consumers and uh, as a result of that I can say you know we've been constantly evolving. One point is to evolve as an innovation, the other is to live up to the market's expectations on the very key thing that Indians love, yes. the price point. Yep. How, how do you manage the price points in a market like India? Well, uh, you know when you're trying to give some solutions, some smartphone solutions mm -hmm. to people, uh, affordability has a different connotation. So affordability in a feature phone could possibly be 2,000 rupees or below. Yeah. Affordability in smartphones could be a price point of 10,000 or so. Okay. So over a period of time, we've been uh, we've been bringing in very smart devices, and we've been trying to bring in those smart devices at affordable price points as well. Okay. And uh, and I think the proof of that lies in the fact that today we have a very large youth consumer base. Yeah. Today we have consumers starting at the age of 12 and 14. Yeah. You know, there's one question I've always wanted to ask, even as a BlackBerry user in the past, which is, what if BBM is no longer an option? How will it hit BlackBerry's popularity? Well, I don't think uh, BlackBerry as a device sells only because of a BBM solution. But it's a, a great lot of driver. people like it. It's a great you know, BBM as an acronym is known even much more than RIM as an acronym. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, so far as India is concerned, definitely so. Yeah. But I don't think it's the only driver for a BlackBerry ownership. Uh, a lot of people buy a BlackBerry device and they discover later that there's something called a BBM, mm. and which, you know, enables them to connect socially with a whole lot of people. You know, it's seamless connectivity. You can share pictures, you can share uh, voice messages, you can share messages at a, at a high speed and absolutely seamlessly. Uh, youth loves it, everybody loves it, I love it, but I don't think it's the only driver for that because I think there's a whole lot more in the ecosystem for a BlackBerry device. So you're saying that the... BBM going won't be a scare? It will be. No, I don't think so. And anyway, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. there to you stay. want to be quick to make that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's there to say. It's actually chosen to sit on that little hill on the there. Little mount there. But Sunil, this is a good time for us to do a quick rapid fire for you, yes, uh, okay. which we do on the show pretty often with our CEOs and get them to answer some easy questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> easy in my definition. <laughs> yes. Come, let's start. 
round of life for a hole in one? Both. Blackberry or iPhone? Blackberry, clearly. Would you go for the bushes or a halfway house? Uh, neither. Hot dog or a sandwich? That's a difficult one. Uh, hot dog. Golf in India or golf in Southeast Asia? Anywhere. Which is your favorite club in the bag? Difficult one because at different times you use a different one. I love my putting. Play for fun or for dough? Fun. What is your dream for ball? Tiger Woods, Michelle Wee, myself and I don't think anybody else. Okay, so you'll actually truncate that. <laughs> well, what do you think five years from now you'll be doing at Blackberry? Uh, I hope five years from now I would be celebrating every day. Uh, a success at Blackberry and uh, no but on a more serious note I think uh, it, it's a journey it's an everyday journey from now to five years to beyond that uh, I would be happy if I'm able to constantly bring the right products which my consumers are looking for at all points of time do you think there'll be more competition coming up from uh, Blackberry for the iPad 3 well, actually, we are not focused on any of the competitors to define our strategy. Because we have such unique solutions which the consumers look for and which consumers love. So I would rather let our consumers define our strategy than competition define our strategy. One challenge for yourself, both in golf and in business. Hole in one. Always been looking for one. <laughs> uh, one challenge in business. Well, to be number one uh, as soon as possible. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Good to have you on the show. Thank you so much.